So in this second section regarding H. pylori infection, we'll be studying about the different ways to diagnose Helicobacter pylori infection. Firstly, you will be studying about the different indications regarding uh, testing a patient with H. pylori infection and then the different techniques which is the non-endoscopic tests and techniques to diagnose H. pylori infection and the endoscopic uh, types of investigations. So H. pylori infection uh, testing is usually recommended if a clinician um, has is completely prepared to uh, completely uh, treat the patient with H. pylori infection. So the different types of indications uh, regarding testing a patient with H. pylori infection, the standard um, indications are the active peptic ulcer disease, which is either gastric or duodenal ulcers. A patient with a history of peptic ulcer disease uh, without the prior treatment of H. pylori infection, a patient who have never been uh, treated with uh, H. pylori infections treatment. And then patients with gastric uh, malt lymphoma, which is usually recommended in low-grade malt lymphoma. And then following any endoscopic resection for early gastric cancer, those patients are very prone to developing um, helicobacter pylori infection. So they are also indicated uh, to test for H. pylori infection. Other than that, uninvestigated dyspepsia. Uh, usually uh, the patients, they present with symptoms such as dyspepsia and um, they have no they have the clinicians have completely no clue and it does not lead to any other diagnosis other than h pylori infection so this test should also be um, offered to these uh, patients with dyspepsia controversial uh, indications for uh, tests regarding h pylori infections are functional dyspepsia uh, population prevalence is around 20% and then the patients with chronic uh, uh, use of uh, uh, proton pump inhibitors and then patients with chronic uh, NSAID use because these patients they're usually very very prone to um, developing an H. pylori infection and then patients with unexplained iron deficiency uh, anemia or uh, immune thrombocytic uh, uh, cytopenic purpura these patients are also, these are like one of the uh, symptoms and uh, clinical uh, symptoms present uh, within the patients with H. pylori infection. And then patients with first degree relatives of gastric cancer and first generation immigrants from a region of high incidence of gastric cancer um, as H. pylori infection can ultimately lead to uh, gastric cancer. So these patients are also needed to be tested with H. pylori infection. So the different choice of uh, methods to be uh, tested with H. pylori depends on different uh, factors such as the clinical setup, uh, if, they've, if they have these sort of uh, techniques present with them uh, to test with H. pylori infection, uh, the cost effective test and the accuracy of the test, these are the methods uh, that should be chosen by the patient or the clinician. So um, H. pylori infection can be diagnosed by two techniques. One is being the non-endoscopic methods, the different methods listed, and then the endoscopic methods. So the non-endoscopic methods would be without the use of an endoscope, such as a serology, which could be qualitative or quantitative. This is widely available in most of the uh, clinicians' uh, um, clinics. It's usually very inexpensive uh, and has a very good uh, negative uh, predictive value. The disadvantage regarding serology is that uh, it has a very poor positive predictive value uh, if the prevalence of uh, helicobacter pylori infection is low and um, it's, it's completely not useful if a patient has been treated with H. pylori infection. The second uh, most important and very common uh, test, non-endoscopic test is the urea breath test with C13 or C14. It usually identifies the um, H. pylori infection that is active within the um, gastric lumen. 
um, the accuracy is not uh, uh, affected with HP prevalence as compared to the serology and it is usually uh, uh, indicated to patients both before and after the treatment of uh, the H. pylori infection after being uh, for uh, us uh, for knowing if the patient has been completely eradicated with uh, the H. pylori infection. So the disadvantages regarding uh, urea breath test is that the availability uh, is usually not present uh, in uh, most of the clinics. Accuracy can be affected by the use of proton pump inhibitor and uh, any antibiotic use. And uh, there's a very slight uh, radiation uh, present with the dose uh, of C14. Thirdly, the non-endoscopic test includes the stool antigen test. It usually also uh, indicates the uh, active infection of H. pylori uh, uh, and the accuracy is usually also uh, similar to urea breath test that is not affected uh, with the prevalence of helicobacter pylori infection and it is also useful be both before and after the treatment of uh, the H. pylori infection. So the disadvantage re regarding stool antigen test is that um, it has a very few data available for polyclonal tests and the accuracy is also usually affected as similar to the urea breath test. It is also affected by uh, patients who are using antibiotics or using proton pump inhibitors. So urea breath test is a very um, easy uh, uh, test regarding H. pylori infection. It is usually used in patients uh, such as children and pregnant women. Urea breath test and urea breath test, what do we do is that the urea, uh, urease hydrolyzes the um, urea, like I've mentioned before, into ammonia and carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide is being tagged uh, with uh, uh, is being tagged and can be detected in the breath of the patient. It detects active helicobacter pylori infection and is very useful in making the diagnosis and the bacterial hydrolysis of oral administered urea is being tagged with a carbon isotope either 13C or 14C. So this 13C or uh, urea is being ingested uh, by the patient. And thus, it hydrolyzes the uh, the urease within the H. pylori. It hydrolyzes the urea into ammonia and carbon dioxide. So this carbon dioxide is tagged with the 13C, and when it goes back to the blood, and it is being and when the carbon dioxide is exhaled by the patient uh, during respiration, the um, the exhaled carbon dioxide is being noted and uh, and it has it confirms the presence of H. pylori infection within the uh, stomach. So this is a graph which shows the 13 carbon dioxide, the tagged car carbon dioxide, and the time of one to two hours. So a positive urea breath test would be um, present for almost one to two hours. So now if we talk about the endoscopic methods. What are the different types of uh, endoscopic methods that help in uh, diagnosing and investigating an H. pylori infection. Histology, we, with the use of an endoscope and uh, taking a biopsy sample, we can know the, um, we can note the histology and send it to the uh, microbiologist. The advantages of the histology is that it's excellent in sensitivity and specificity with special and immune stains. It provides additional information about the gastric mucosa in regards to if the patient um, is uh, leading into uh, gastric uh, cancer. So the disadvantage is that it's very in, uh, expensive as uh, an endoscope is being used and the pathology cost is also very high. Accuracy is also affected by the proton pump inhibitor and antibiotic use. 
The second endoscopic test is the use of the rapid urease test. It has a very, uh, the most important advantage of uh, this test is that it is very rapid. It gives results within one to two days and it is accurate in patients whether they're using proton pump inhibitors or antibiotics. It does not affect the um, accuracy and uh, it, ha it has no any um, additional cost of the pathology. This advantage is that it requires endoscope, which is um, very um, difficult for a patient to undergo and it is less accurate after the treatment of uh, patients using proton pump inhibitors. Culture is the other um, endoscopic test that uh, can be taken with the help of a biopsy sample with the help of an endoscope. Specificity is around 100% and it allows antibiotic sensitivity testing and the disadvantage regarding endoscopic method known as culture is that um, the culture uh, method it has a very difficult protocol and it's not widely available and it's very expensive because of the use of an endoscope. Lastly, the uh, polymerase chain reaction assay uh, known as the PCR assay is, has an excellent sensitivity and specificity uh, this is the advantage and it also permits the detection of antibiotics, antibiotic resistance. So we can know that if the patient um, is resistant to any um, proton pump inhibitor or any type of antibiotics. The disadvantage regarding PCR is that it is not widely available. It's not present in mostly of the, mostly, uh, most of the clinics and the technique is not uh, standardized yet uh, in the world. Other than that, it's very expensive because of the use of the endoscope. So the histology is um, one of the most uh, important technique and it usually was, and it, uh, was also the gold standard technique to diagnose H. pylori infection. But um, you, now nowadays what happens is that uh, histology is usually not used because the H. pylori infection does not really reside uh, in one portion of the stomach. Uh, the variability of H. pylori within the gastric mucosa causes a very um, uh, false negative answers and systemic errors regarding the diagnosis of H. pylori infection. So this is a histological picture uh, regarding uh, H. pylori infection. As you can see, these are the epithelial cells and this is the gastric mucosa. It causes uh, complete damage to the epithelial cells as these arrows have been uh, shown over here. And these, this, uh, these are the gastric pits regarding the gastric epithelium and it also causes slight damage to the mucosal uh, layer of the gastric lumen. So in this section, we've studied all about the um, diagnosis of uh, H. pylori infection. Uh, the other, please keep watching the other sections regarding H. pylori infection. Thank you for watching scardia.com.